On this episode of Hardtail Party, we go bike packing in a single overnighter on the Black Canyon Trail outside of Phoenix, Arizona. So this trip is a little under 60 miles the way we've set it up, which is only about 30 miles a day, which is great for a bike packing trip. I'm here with my buddies Cody and my new friend Robbie from Instagram. Hey. We're here to enjoy nature, have fun, explore, see new places on our bikes, and go camping. So poor Robbie forgot his clipless shoes, so he's doing this in minimalist trail runner hiker shoes on SPDs. That is gonna be a bruised foot. <laughs> Cody's already caught air. Oh, perfect. I can handle this stream crossing. I've never ridden an inch of this trail. This is exciting. So the first adjustments are underway on a suspension fork. When you hit bumps on a normal mountain bike, you don't have to think about bags contacting tires. But when you're loaded up, you definitely do. I'm going with the rigid as an experiment. This is RSD's aluminum rigid fork. It's got six water bottle boss mounts, which is cool. I got my food down here, water up there, sleeping gear. This is an awesome pack that Rogue Panda made for me. And yeah, we're going 27.5 by 3.0 front and rear. One thing about bike packing, you can do all the research you want and until you actually go, that's when you start learning about how to load stuff, what works well, what you like, what you don't. And you're never gonna get it perfect, so just go. This is fun, this is a little single overnighter in our neck of the woods. It's very cheap to do. We don't have to fly to a distant country, we just explore our own backyard. And there's no right or wrong way to bike pack as long as you're out there safe, enjoying it and having fun with your buddies. It's a completely different way to enjoy mountain biking. Woo! <laughs> Manuals on a loaded bike are a different experience. I just lost a water bottle on that uh, manual off the little cattle grate. So the specialized water bottle side entry holders are working a lot better than this cheap foundation one I've got. The number one thing every bike packer should have is a whole bunch of these volet straps. You can pretty much attach anything to anything with these guys. All right, now I can get rowdy again. It's funny, the first hour or two of every bike packing trip is moving some clanging pot over there to this bag and tightening this and loosening that. And so my two riding partners are endurance athletes. Cody is a champion single speed XC rider and Robbie is a competitive trail runner. And I'm a guy who rides his bike on the weekends. But we're all together having fun. I can't wheelie on a loaded bike. Oh, I can't get it up. It's so heavy on my forks right now. kind of a sweet spot finding fun trails on a loaded bike because they can't be too spicy or you're just gonna wreck. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. Woo. So here's a trick for those of you that uh, use your phone for GPS. Put it in airplane mode when you're bike packing. It'll still use your GPS, but not look for cell service and save your battery. I got my route mapped and uploaded into my Wahoo so I can look down and see that we're still on route throughout the day. What a great trail! <laughs> oh, this is a great trail. Really fun. Even on a loaded bike, it's fun. On a rigid loaded bike. I'm loving this. Hasn't rained for a week and a half, so the river crossing shouldn't be too high. 
but you should always check the levels just to be safe. I did not expect to be going through shady juniper groves. This is cool. One thing I love about bike packing, you don't need a super expensive bike. If I had XTR or X01 or XX1 Axis, it would not change my experience at all right now. My bike's already 20 pounds heavier because of my water and food and sleeping bags. So having the world's lightest carbon wheels or highest engagement hub, none of that matters. You just need a reliable rig. And that's super fun. If you're interested in getting into bike packing, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I have some videos coming up that explain how to find routes, how to plan them, how to set up your bike, all that stuff. So subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified when I do. I can't wait to share more of my love of bike packing with my viewers. <laughs> oh man. There are moments on the rigid fork where my front wheel just gets airborne bouncing off the right rock without me trying and I'm it's kind of fun. Just hang on. Who's thirsty? I've driven on the highway that's like two miles that way before and I had no idea this existed over here. We were just talking about the value of exploring your backyard. It's close. It may feel comfortable and you've seen it a million times, but I promise when you get out there and try something new, you will see it through totally new eyes. We were just talking about how we've all driven by this. There's like a mile over there is the main highway and we've driven by this hundreds of times. But just being here on the bikes on this day with this weather and seeing this amazing landscape opens up a whole new world. And there's so much value in just getting out and exploring. You don't have to go to the other side of the world. That's cool too, but you can explore your own backyard and this is amazing. I'm just having a good time. Man, look at that view. Oh, man, whoever built this trail did such a good job. Climb for the perfect amount, and then when you're tired, you're ready for a descent. And when you're tired of that descent, you're ready for a climb. It's really well built. I've got a few audiences in mind making this video. I'm making it for my viewers who don't, many don't bike pack or haven't been exposed to it a whole lot, and kind of want to show them what it's all about and why I love it. I'm also making this for people who want to ride this route and then you're going to want to see what the trail's like, what to expect, what the terrain is like, etc. And I'm also making this for myself to document as a journal a great adventure with my friends. What an incredible planet we live on. You can't see it, but I'm just grinning ear to ear. This is so fun. Yeah. Oh, this is so fun. Oh, this is just what I love bike packing. A little bit of a challenge with a loaded bike, but nothing dangerous. And it's not so hard that you feel like you're going to die on a loaded bike. Oh, yeah, just a roller coaster. Bikepacking can take so many different forms and mean so many different things to different people. For some people, it involves staying in a hotel every night and eating at a restaurant three times a day. For other people, it's a race where you just jam as much garbage 
gas station food in that has calories as you can and just press on and ride through the night and sleep three hours a night. For others like us, we're just a bunch of friends having fun, going camping together on our bikes. If I were racing this, for me, it would take 100% of the fun out of it. Some people like racing, it brings out the enjoyment for them. But that's okay, we can all like different things about riding. How can we still be going down? I've been going downhill for 40 minutes straight. That's amazing. The plants change when they're in washes like this and they have a beautiful smell. It just smells crisp and clean. So we are at a crossroads here, literally. And we are going to go to the Clear Yacht Club and Bar. I don't drink, but these guys can get some beers. All right, let's do it. So this is not on the route. We're probably gonna add five miles to our day total. I think it's about two, two and a half miles down this gravel road. This will be fun. I hear this is kind of a quirky, unique thing that you got to do when you're out here. So this ended up being a little farther away than we thought. But we're so far, we might as well go there now. Civilization-ish. We made it to our lunch spot, the Cleeter Bar and Yacht Club. And out here is the Yacht Club. That is pretty fun, actually. I think that's cool. These guys working on their tans? Yeah. Exactly. We found the Yacht Club. So for lunch, I'm having these rice cakes from the Scratch Labs recipe book. And they're pretty cool. They were easy to make. You just I use an instant pot or you can use a rice cooker and you add like bacon or maple syrup or jam or peanut butter. Pretty good food on the go. Well, that's the most interesting part of the day so far. That was a worthy detour. <laughs> That was an interesting detour. Out there alive. Yeah, there were some interesting characters in there. Back on the Black Canyon Trail. Thank you very much. No, no. This is a public reminder. A, to keep your dogs in control. If they chase bicyclists aggressively, they should be on a leash, even if you're on a horse. That being said, a little trail etiquette lesson. Horses always have the right of way. No matter what. Because horses get spooked. Bikes don't get spooked. Hikers usually don't get spooked. So horses always have the right of way. After horses, hikers have the right of way. After hikers, bikers, cyclists have the right of way. And if it's a motorized trail, after cyclists, motorcyclists have the right of way. You may not agree with it. You may think it should be different. Hey, no! No! Go home! As I was saying before the dog charged me, 
that startled me. Well, after getting run off the trail by an angry dog, I went over the bars and landed in a cactus. And I've got some deburring to do. That's absolutely unacceptable. If you have an animal like that, it should not be on the trail. Your dog chased me and was aggressive over here and caused me to crash. I want to make sure he stays away. Your dog pursued us and aggressively chased us and I crashed because I did not know he was attacking us. Well, I don't know that because I don't know your dog, but when he's snarling and growling chasing me, I don't, appre I don't appreciate that. I ended up in the cactus because of that. It startled me. I'm sure you could appreciate if something snuck up on your horse and started chasing them. I agree. Both are unacceptable. Are you heading that way? All right. If well, I have to pull out about 500 cacti from what I just landed in when he was chasing me. Okay. Well, after the pseudo dog attack, my pants are completely full of cacti. The horse owners were not, they never said sorry. They were, they said, well, that's just like when you guys come behind us and scare us. And we reminded them that that's not what we did. We stopped, waited for them to come off the trail and they just acted like it's par for the course and we'll see more horses and more dogs and we should expect the same. And I told them it's not acceptable if you have a dog that chases other people and growls at them. You, you can't have it on public lands where other people are recreating. And here's Cody showing the good friend that he is. Yep. It's a good thing he doesn't have a hairy ass. <laughs> I have hundreds of cacti in me and they're those little fuzzy ones from the prickly pears. These guys are good friends. For the last half an hour, Robbie's been picking all the little pricklies out of my outer shorts. <laughs> and Cody gets an award. <laughs> Something. Something. I, I just took off my shorts and was standing in the trail buck naked. And he was picking out <laughs> the cacti where the, my saddle is so I don't sit on any. I pretty much got it all in one left butt cheek. And there's still hundreds in there. But... He pulled one out, I wish we'd seen it. It was about this long and it had gone all the way in and it was just a tiny little black thing and he pulled the whole thing out. It makes for good stories. I'm uh, really disappointed in the attitude of those equestrians. And I wanna say that not all equestrians are jerks like those people, but those people never apologized. They just kinda said, well, that's to be expected when a horse has a dog. They just like to chase things and absolutely uh, unacceptable. I was going to go for a blood-free trip. I banged my knee pretty good on something, but I think I'll be all right. It's a little bit swollen. Let's continue. You guys are good friends. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Back on the horse. Well, I'm never calling this a horse. Oh, yeah, I can feel about 40 more in my legs. They're just going to have to rub themselves until they break off. Oh, I can feel them everywhere. Yeah! I was not expecting that. That was a little exciting. Oh, I got some pain in my left knee. That was completely unnecessary, that crash. I'm not going to let it ruin my day. Perfect grade to just keep the flow going. Surprising how planted this thing is with the rigid fork. I'm probably running 17 psi up front, maybe 16. You definitely want tubeless tires on this trail. I wouldn't even consider coming out here without that. 
I can't believe how well this thing steers fully loaded. It steers just like it's not loaded. That's amazing. I'm completely sold on the rigid fork for bike packing. Heavy horse traffic. Next yeah. two and a half miles. Cody says it's more fun ahead and that sounds good to me. We gotta keep an eye out for horses and especially their dogs. I don't blame the dogs, just their owners. Man, I never thought I'd be <laughs> railing corners on single track on a loaded bike like this. So good. We are at 27.9 miles, and I just want to take a moment to call out and appreciate the fact that Robbie is wearing Merrill barefoot shoes. Vapor gloves. Vapor gloves on SPD. <laughs> Those are thinner than flip-flops. Yeah, watch this. These were his river crossing shoes or go to bed shoes, and he forgot his clipless shoes. So that's what he's been riding for 28 miles on those in this that looks so slippery it's, props man it's, it's a, you know respect <laughs> Woo! what an incredible day i'm really enjoying this this section's interesting it's a little bit of a momentum killer every couple feet Kind of bumpy and choppy. Ooh, how's that for a campsite? Beautiful. We're gonna keep pushing on. You got it. Nicely done. All right, this concludes our section of Bumblebee and now we're about to go on to Black Canyon. Ooh, got some razor sharp rocks here. Standing straight up, just want to slice your tire. bit loose. All right, is that Black Canyon City down there? That is, yeah. Ooh, you can't just plow this on the rigid fork. You gotta take it slow. Just take your time, pick your line. This is a cactus skeleton. If you're not from the desert, you've probably never seen that. Pretty cool. We are coming up to the Agua Fria River eventually, where we will fill up and retop our water. That is a tight one, I like it. What an absolute adventure today. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Now a lot of people are tempted to camp in places like this, but you always need to camp 100 feet from water. And it's really cold in these valleys. The cold kind of sinks in and it takes the sun forever to shine in. So at your campsite, the sun doesn't wake you up. You always want to take water from a moving stream if you can. That's always better than a stagnant puddle. And the faster it's moving, the less likely it's collecting garbage. 
we always treat water as contaminated because you never know. And now I take my Steri pen, I put it in and I stir it. And as you can see, there's a UV light in there and it's killing all the nasties. I think you're supposed to do a liter at a time. This is just under a liter, so it'll be extra pure. But it knows how long to do it for. It's usually about a minute, and then it turns itself off when it's pure. All right. Now it's blinking green and red. That means you are done. Your water is pure. Okay, we're all filtered and loaded up. After an already frustrating day with those shoes, he is got true grit right there. No complaint. Ooh, that got a little bit deep. Splashed my socks. Oh man, I'm so sorry. I was with one buddy when we were crossing Oak Creek, and it was a little bit higher water. Huh. Yeah! When my hamstrings twitch, I can pinpoint the cactus needles in my leg. <laughs> Riding into the sunset. I'm looking for a campsite now. What do you think? Ooh, this looks better. Don't you think? Is there more room up here? Maybe. Not very flat, huh? Not very flat. Mm. That's a problem out here. All right. Nice spot. This is camp. Well, we've made it to camp for the night. Yeah. We're gonna cook some dinner, set stuff up, and relax. I'm hungry. That was a great first day. I can't believe you did that well yeah. with those shoes and no complaining. That's amazing. All right, here are the ride stats. We've ridden for eight hours and 29 minutes, 38.4 miles, average speed of 4.5 miles an hour, max of 31.1 for me, uh, 3,000 feet of climbing, 5,000 feet of descending. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Nature. Yeah. For dinner. Ooh, Tasty bite. Masala, that sounds good. I'm having a cup of noodles. Cody, what are you having? I'm having some chili mac with beef. Best part of the day for me was uh, meeting two new awesome people and being outside for an adventure. Best part of the day was getting to pull some cactus out of Steve <laughs> <laughs> or the long descent down and a fire road over to the yacht club. Both were pretty good. The best part of my day was getting to know Cody better and meeting Robbie. That's been really fun to get to know him and seeing Robbie's attitude of never complaining despite having a thousand reasons to complain. That was impressive. And this trail is really, really fun. I really enjoyed it. It's probably the most exciting trail I've ridden with a loaded bag. It was really fun. Looking forward to tomorrow. Good morning. I think I went to bed at like 8.15. I don't know what time it is, probably 7. What time? Almost 8. Almost 8, yeah, 7.45. <laughs> I probably slept for 11 hours. That felt good. I didn't sleep much the night before, so that was good to catch up. Cody and I did not use a tent. We just cowboy camped under the stars. Robbie's got a sweet tent that winter aisle 80 bucks on amazon and i think i'd pick that over a bivy we got camp picked up you can't see a trace except for the socks still drying in the sunscreen. cacti and the sunscreen it is significantly warmer than when we started yesterday a because the sun's out and it's not overcast and b we're closer to phoenix and the closer you get to phoenix the warmer it gets we are just above Black Canyon City. This should be exciting. I've never ridden anything down there and everything's new and that's always fun. All right. Saddle up. Some Here we okay. go. My 
my brain has to remember what it's like to ride a real loaded bike. What a beautiful way to start the day. Wow. Got the stream coming through this awesome little slot canyon down here. So pretty. This is a fun technical section. A lot of jaggedy grapefruit and watermelon sized rocks in the middle of the trail. Takes a lot of balance to get through that stuff. Black Canyon City down there. Oh, it's chunky on this side. Oh, this has got good flow. Oh man, there's so much flow to be found on this trail. <laughs> yeah, totally. Here we go, getting as much speed as we can before the big climb. No brakes. I coasted a little bit up it. Black Canyon Trail. Here we go, continuing on. <laughs> uh. Heading on down to the river. Keep dogs on leash per county ordinance. Cool how this slate looks shiny and wet, but it's just the shiny nature of the rock. Oh yeah, that's a lovely spot. That is beautiful in the middle of Arizona. Look at this. I think we can stepping stone our way across the rocks to the sandbar. The question is, are we gonna be able to get out over there? Or are we gonna be in the bushes? We're scouting the route. I think this is our best place to cross. Shoes and socks come off. Although Cody taught me a trick. If you have a spare set of socks and you want water shoes, leave your socks on and then the mossy rocks become way less slippery. It's the only way to cross the creeks in Sedona when it's mossy. All right, Cody's going first. Going in. Do it, Cody. Ooh, that's a little cold. All right, it's only knee deep so far. Well, here goes nothing. I think I have the shortest legs here. That is Agua Fria, for sure. Slow and steady, baby. Is that current pulling your bike yet? Yep. <laughs> I brought this for this specific moment. That was tricky. Ooh, that looks technical. Yeah, Cody. Here we go. What a trail, man. Loving it. Plus tires are the way to go on this trip, or at least 2.6s. Woo! I think this is it. 
<laughs> Come on, get moving, get moving. Oh, dang it. So close. Oh, yeah. Like a boss. Yeah. This is way warmer than that last one. Yeah. Agua Caliente crossing right there. Cool. Salva yesterday said we only had like four hours and 36 minutes of moving time. I believe it. And we were out for like, what? Eight and hours? a half. Eight yeah. Hours and yeah, something. But that's the whole point of bike pack, is just That's cruising. right. Slow it down and yeah. just have fun. Yeah, I'm sure we spent two hours at the off club. <laughs> Did you dump it? Yeah. We have a big loose climb out of this wash where we crossed the river. Maybe 10 minutes of climbing. This is the steepest climbing we've done yet. Down there's the river we crossed. There's the town of Black Canyon City. And we continue on. We've got some more switchback climbs coming up. It's a real nice grade. I mean, it's still a climb. You get a little tired, but it's sustainable without a break. I know I keep saying it, but this trail is so well built. It's really nice. We've been climbing for half an hour, and then we get these little flat spots for a little bit for the next switch back. It's, it feels like a mountain biker built this trail with mountain bikes in mind to I actually enjoy climbs like this. Beautiful. Beautiful 270 degree views here. That was a good 35 minutes of climbing. The thing you don't realize, unless you bike pack, is how taxing it is on your brakes. Because your bike's usually about 20 pounds heavier. And there's a lot of long descents that you need to brake on, and it just cooks those brake pads. Whoever built this trail, you are amazing. The world needs more of your work. This is such a good trail, up and down. Not bad at all. Piece of cake, dude. Oh yeah. Even on our bike packing trips we session. Watching the rock crawlers down here on this cool trail. We got to find out what it is so we can ride it one night Ooh. as a night ride. Wow. That's a drop. Great control. What a great driver. Wow. That was really smooth. Well, that was fun to see. A little rock crawling action while we're out here. Left there. Oh, he got it. Are oh, any in you? Not so bad. Ah, <sighs> it's getting a lot warmer. Yes. It's in the seventies now, I would guess. And there's not much of a breeze down here. What'd you think of that section? Pretty fun. Well built, nice and flowy. It was, uh, it was chunky, so I hurt my feet with these shoes, but a lot of fun, good stuff. Would you call this a log crossing? <laughs> Sad. These saguaro cactus, 
take 70 to 100 years to grow their first arm. That tells you how old they are. This is the most difficult section so far. Just like riding on loose baseballs. This is crazy. Get it? You there? Yeah, buddy. Nice. And a wheelie out. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. You got it. Keep going. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, nice. It's fun making this through as a team and helping each other get through everything. I need to stay in my aggressive attack position even when I get tired. So when I get tired, oh, I get in a sloppy body position and then I get closer to crashing. So I need to remember to stay in attack position even though tired. Yeah, holy crap. Woo. So beautiful here. Filtering up a little, taking a morale boost, dunking our heads in the river. Beautiful. Today has been slower going than yesterday, I will say that. They're not crossing the river in that thing. It's a go-kart. Oh, he's gonna do it. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. That was epic. I was not expecting that to make it across. This is a hard section. I'm ready for this to be over. I'm tired. Feels like day two was a lot harder than day one for me. I am super exhausted. I'm tanking, I'm bonking. We have done a lot of climbing from that river crossing with all the rocks. through this saguaro forest crazy I haven't peed once all day except for in the morning I could drink another half gallon of water I feel like look at these guys this is how you know you have good friends they pull cactus out of your butt and they wait for you at the top of the climbs beautiful Trying to make it to the cars before dark. I think we got this. What an adventure it's been. This has been really fun. All right, we have a decision. 1.2 miles on the west loop or 1.2 miles on the east loop. Let's try west, see if it flows a little quicker. How are you doing? Doesn't really matter. Yeah. No. <laughs> We're doing great. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, Cody just finished his camelback from day one. He hasn't topped any water off this whole trip. Okay. Still got a whole bottle. Yeah. I got some swamp water with floaties in it. I'll take it. We're chasing the sun. Oh, this is fast travel, 14 miles an hour. I can do that. 
Guys, I want you to wrap your heads around the idea that he's done 60 miles, essentially barefoot. <sighs> My wife called. Sure, there goes the sun. Yeah, lights. But we got another 20 minutes of light. Then the headlights come out. Yep. Uh. Oh, that's trippy. All right, that is our car, and that is us, and that is 2,000 feet. We're within a mile. This has been one epic adventure and journey. I've had so much fun. Uh -huh. I, see I see it. Hey, hey, there's the finish line. 65 miles, I'm still pumping every transition. <laughs> Yay! We made it. <sighs> Let's do a good one. Nice work. Oh. Ooh, that's smooth. The best part of the trip for me today was the company, and there were some, it seems like every downhill was super fun, and this whole amazing trail is my favorite bikepacking trail I've ever done. It was the most fun to ride loaded, it was fun. The ups were fun for the most part, the downs were super fun, the company was fun, there were plenty of water resupply points. It was just a, it seems like this trail was built to be bike packed and what a perfect trail. Whole trip was just being on bikes. Today was just sticking the head in the creek, cooling down. Best part of the trip for me, meeting Cody and Steve and uh, getting out of my comfort zone, pushing and uh, although it may not seem like it, I'm definitely a better rider than I was yesterday. What an adventure. Thanks for watching, you guys. There's a party on the Black Canyon Trail, and you're invited. Let's see our stats today. 8 hours and 12 minutes. 29.3 plus 1.2, so 30 and a half exactly. Average speed, 3.6 miles an hour. Max speed, 25.8. Uh, let's see... elevation so 3400 feet of climbing 3900 feet of descending it did feel like we climbed a little more than we descended today but that's not quite true